You're listening to Southern Fried Sports with Travis Ryer on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. This is Southern Fried Sports with Bama Online Senior Analyst Travis Ryer on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. It is 11 a.m. on a beautiful Tuesday morning here in Tuscaloosa. My name is Jacob Harrison, sitting in for the one and only Travis Ryer right here on Southern Fried Sports. As always, the show is brought to you by Peterbrook Chocolatier right there on McFarland Boulevard headed into Northport. Go check them out. Enjoy some, uh, you know, you know, just put a handle on that sweet tooth. We all got to do it from time to time and... Uh, yeah, I need to head over there myself and uh and, and treat treat the misses for, for being awesome as we're getting ready to uh move two doors down and enjoy an extra little bit of space there in the old apartment. Filling in for me on the other side of the glass, producing the show, pressing all the right buttons is J.R. Moore. So today, Woo! together, we are forming the sixty minute men. Woo! There you go. Woo! Rick gets a little excited these days. It's a little excited these days. All the right buttons early. I was still reading the baseball stats. Sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. And and that that's absolutely right. We're gonna dive into a little bit of baseball. I uh, feel like these guys deserve it. Uh, you know, last year their their season gets cut short because of COVID. But you know, Brad Bohannon had his guys on the up and up. Like they were coming in, they were ranked, and it's uh, you think the SEC West is hard in football. It is a monster in baseball as well. So for them to to be in that situation uh, coming into the season, you know, expectations were high. They have to handle those, and I think they've done a good job of that. And J.R. Moore is kind of our resident uh, beat reporter when it comes to the baseball team here at the University of Alabama, and we've gotten to see them up close and personal at the Joe here lately for a few series, uh, handling McNeese throughout the weekend. And now uh, they will have uh, Jacksonville State today at 4 p.m. That one out in Jacksonville. But Jr. Man, just tell tell you know tell the folks, tell me too, because I, I'm an uncultured swine. I, I, I guess I'm not a real American. Uh, baseball is not the pastime uh, that I expected it to be when I was growing up. Uh, it, it just never took to me. But nonetheless, I love my alma mater, and when I'm at a baseball game, I love it. So. What what's going on with this baseball team? What what can we expect? Did you get out to an opening day or an opening weekend game? I, I did not. It, look, it, it's expensive to try to carry my whole family over to the Joe. Now, yeah, that I can <laughs> I can understand that. Yeah, I remember that as a kid, my dad having to uh, lug us along. But um, well, if you did manage to make it out to one of the games, uh, you would have definitely seen a home run. Uh, there were seven home runs through three games. Uh, the last game had. Three home runs. Uh, Owen Diodati had two on the weekend, as well as Zane Denton. Uh, we had a walk-off home run in the second game and a grand slam in the last game and um, just really demoralized the McNeese bullpen. Uh, shut it down because uh, there's there's not much else you can do in baseball. Like I, I once heard it said, and, and don't get me wrong, like we are here to praise baseball, but I once heard it said that you can watch a, a baseball game and uh and and see something new every single time and i i'm not sure that i that i buy that i i think that 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 sport is football but uh nonetheless getting a home run get, getting that walk off run getting a grand slam all that that's awesome that's incredible um now now listen McNeese state fcs school i know that that you know divisions and that sort of thing are a little bit different but uh 
nonetheless, I mean, this is still something to be excited about, correct? Oh, absolutely. And um, I, I think something that I was really excited about was uh, Connor Prelip, Antoine Jean, and I mean, they both let him no run through their starts. Connor Prelip went through five. He had five strikeouts as well as Dylan Smith. Um, but he, he did have a couple runs in, but he, he did manage to get them out uh, of their, like, dangerous situations in the fifth. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about our pitching staff this season, actually. Yeah, I've heard great things about Prelip. Now, when it comes to this Jacksonville State team, I, I would expect a, a, a little tighter competition. Um, but regardless, you know, just just like all the rest of these, uh, you know, heavy heavy scheduled sports, things really matter when it comes to SEC competition and, and getting into that. Now, that that's much further down the line. Um, actually, checking out their schedule, the Crimson Tide still is a month away from. Yikes! The window <laughs> did not decide to stay open for me in here. Uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide baseball team is still a month away from SEC competition. They'll take on Old Miss to open up SEC play March 25th right here in T-Town for a uh, evening uh, first pitch. So kind of clue us in here, JR. What what are the things that we're looking for as Crimson Tide fans to kind of continue the success? Because we're, we're spoiled now. Now I, every sport is playing lights out, and baseball was kind of the one – uh, you know that we've been waiting on kind of the longest, but they they've shown that they're they're capable of being right up there with you know how the softball team, the basketball team, uh, both basketball teams have have performed. Um, so what what do we need to see? What what kind of growth do we need to see out of the baseball team within this month time period uh, before they get into league play? Um, if you had to work on something, it would have to be uh not relying on that long ball. I mean, that's that's hard to say after we hit seven home runs in three games. But there will be a series where we will only get one home run in the series, or we might get no home runs in the series, and we might have to score runs off of small ball, bunting, and getting shots between fielders. So, um, And I saw that in the second game uh, right before we started getting on our home run track again. We did score a run off of what – Many would call it small ball, but um, yeah, we we were on the right track, um, but we just kind of took over on on the bullpen of McNeese. Nonetheless, as I said, dominating in every regard here at the University of Alabama. Hey, if you want to call into the show, you're more than welcome to join us on the Peter Brook Chocolatier Hotline two zero five three four two. 9904 is the number to call. We're going to dive into a ton of topics here today. I well, really want to give back some attention to um, what is going on here athletically at the University of Alabama, and and you know Jr. I, I also want to dive into you know the the, the conversation that that Travis and uh, Gary were having on the previous show, kind of late with this whole thing with Cam Newton and 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 the young man at the seven on seven that were that were getting into it. I also do as as Travis alluded do want to get into the NFL draft a little bit I think there's some interesting develops here with uh Devontae Smith saying that he would choose Mac Jones over to Otonga Valoa but also kind of getting an idea of where Mac Jones should really expect to go in the NFL draft uh you know as his draft stock continues to climb and climb and climb there's got to be some sort of it, it, there's got to be some sort of realistic expectations for him. And and also, on top of that, as it concerns the Mac Jones, I, I just saw something 37 days since the New Orleans Saints were eliminated from the playoffs. Drew Brees still hasn't announced his retirement. And we're still a little bit less than a month away from free agency hitting. So the the entire league could turn up on its head, but it's still, it's still good to get an idea of where these guys are going to go. Let's step out to the Peter Brook Chocolatier hotline. And bring in our guy Michael. Michael, welcome to the show, man. What's going on? Oh, I'm going doing fine today. There's the sun is shining where I'm at, real bright. I'm over here on East Santa Cruz doing all my job, but I'm sitting still parked, so I can call in. <laughs> I hear you, man. What's on your mind? Uh, well, got a question about about uh on the baseball side. Uh, I wonder if you have as much problems with the umpires 
making making terrible calls against Alabama a lot. Like you're doing basketball about the officials. Uh oh, I know I'm stirred up now. <laughs> I, I don't. I'll be the first one to say that I think officials try to be as fair as possible. And that oftentimes, as fans, we get riled up and thinking, well, you didn't call it for them. And But I have seen some of these basketball games. I've been in person to some of these basketball games. The, the one game that I was able to get to this year was against Mississippi State. And, son, there were some ridiculous calls on Alabama in that game. It felt like the referees were absolutely trying to keep Mississippi State in that thing. Um, hey, were you there Saturday? No, I, I, I wasn't there Saturday, but but I did hey, watch the game. You punch up on the computer, you, you can probably get get, you know, get a uh, highlight of hearing me on the ACC you know, network ratting the officials all day in the game. I was on the fifth row right behind with Chris Stewart and all of that. Right. Right in that area of Section C. So uh, and you, if you go back and roll the game, you know, uh, you can probably see me on television. <laughs> I hear you, Michael. Well, I, I, now, I'm, I'm known for adding the officials. I'm sure if I was at a baseball game and up, and when, I, I've been to softball, too, and I felt like riding with the umpires a little bit. But I just wonder if they have as big a problem with the umpires as they do with, with officials in basketball. Football seems to be a little more fair, although I have my issues with football refs at times. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, Everybody it, knows it. It's the thankless job, you know, and it, it's the one where everybody thinks they can they can do it a little bit better than than the guys that are out there doing and, it. But in reality, you know, when I was at the Senior Bowl, I was watching some of these these uh, these young up and comers practice being referees, and uh, and you know they take it very seriously. Like they were running drills and and running drills with the 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 players that were out there doing theirs as well. Uh, so uh, I mean, it takes a lot to learn how to do it, and it, it's understandable when they miss things. But man, sometimes am, it can I be I egregious. I have a phone number this morning. If you don't like the way the games are called, whatever sport it is in the SEC, call two zero five four five eight three thousand, y'all. That's the <laughs> SEC office in Birmingham, Alabama, and they may be listening. They know my voice because I call them up during the ball game Saturday. Thank y'all. <laughs> Y'all have a good day. I bet you do, you man. You as well, Michael, oh, man. Yeah, take it bad. easy. <laughs> Fun call from Michael there. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and uh, we're going to dive into the situation with Cam Newton, uh, check out what's going on with Drew Brees. Why has he not retired yet? And check out where Mac Jones might go in this NFL draft. I'm Jacob Harrison filling in for Travis Ryer right here on Southern Fried Sports. We'll be back right after this on Tide 100.9, the home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. From the University of Alabama, this is Crimson Tide Today. It's a daily update on Bama sports, and it's brought to you by Dex Imaging, the official copier and printer provider for Alabama athletics. Hello again, everybody. I'm Roger Hoover. A stellar weekend at the plate earned Kaylee Tao recognition from the Southeastern Conference as the Madisonville, Kentucky native is the SEC Softball Player of the Week. Tao paced the Alabama offense in an undefeated weekend at the Easton Bama Bash, hitting 786 at the plate with a team leading seven runs scored and nine runs batted in. In the weekend finale against the Tigers, she scored three times and drove in a career best five runs batted in to help the Tide score 13 runs, its highest total in program history against LSU. For her efforts, she was named the Easton Bama Bash MVP. I'll have more in a moment. You hear a lot today about the Bama factor. Well, what exactly is it? It's a saying that Coach Saban uses constantly. It's actually what the program is built on. Commitment, discipline, effort, toughness, and pride. Well, at Dex Imaging, we believe in these same principles. To be the very best we can be, day in and day out. So for all of your business office solutions, put Dex Imaging to work for you. Dex Imaging, the official copier and printer provider of Alabama Athletics. The Alabama women closed the Southeastern Conference Swimming and Diving Championships with three more gold medals on Saturday, boosting the Crimson Tide into fourth place with 973 points, its best team finish since 2003. Ryan White led the way for the Tide, winning her third individual gold of the meet Saturday night, repeating as the 200 backstroke champion with a time of 148.55. The junior was voted as the SEC Swimmer of the Meet and won the SEC Commissioner's Trophy as the individual high point scorer. And that's your Bama update. Crimson Tide Today brought to you by Dex Imaging. Crimson Tide Today is a production of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. 
A beautiful day today with sunshine in full supply. The high 68. For tonight, clear with the low at 42. Tomorrow, very mild. Partly to mostly sunny. The high 71. Thursday, a mix of sun and clouds. The chance of a few isolated showers. The high 69. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. Tide 100.9. For more coverage of Alabama football, visit us at Tide100.9.com or download the free Tide 100.9 app. Well, no doubt, Spiderweb's going to bring us back here into Southern Fried Sports. I'm Jacob Harrison with J.R. Moore alongside me producing the show. Speaking of Spiderwebs and, and uh, maybe choosing the option to don't speak, that would have been a wiser option for either Cam Newton or this young man at a 7-on-7 seven seven camp. Uh, I think his name is uh, Seth Owens is the, uh, the young man that, that you know, had some few choice words for for Cam Newton and and look we're all Alabama fans here we we all have choice words for Cam Newton too uh most of them not nice most of them not clean and you know it is what it is uh none of us would probably say those things in person though i feel like uh you know at least a handful of us you know lack the uh, the courage to to go up to Cam and do that he is an imposing figure you know people forget he's 65 250 and he's a, a a monster of a man, right? And he's had a legendary football career, whether you like it or not, whether you like how it went, how it went about becoming one, or or where he performed those football actions. You know, I, I understand all that. You don't have to like the guy, but I feel like you do have to respect him. Uh, and and listening to to how Travis and Gary were were talking about this in the previous show, my only problem is is that is instantly assuming that because this guy is a young guy that grew up with a phone in his hands, he feels like he can talk to anybody however he wants. I, I agree with, with Cam Newton. Now, first of all, I'm not sure that Cam should have engaged with the kid at all. Probably should have just ignored it. It would have never been a thing. We wouldn't be talking about it. Nobody would have ever known it happened. Uh, and kid probably would have still got his TikTok likes. I mean, you know, he probably wouldn't have learned anything. But but in Cam's uh, statement on on basically what happened, the reason that he's at, telling the kid, you know, you know, where's your dad, is so he could speak to his dad and and kind of come to you know speak with an adult, try to figure out what in the world's going on. I agree with that because at the pro- at the end of the day, is there's got to be a reason beyond he grew up with a phone in his hand to to treat another human being this way because as as an Alabama alum. And as a football fan, and as somebody who has respected Cam's ability, has never really liked anything about Cam Newton outside of the fact that he's a fun football player to watch. There is nothing about me, and yes, I'm I'm considerably older than this kid, uh, but I still grew up. I'm a, I'm a millennial. You know, I grew up with a phone in my hand, devices, social media, all that sort of stuff. There was, there's absolutely nothing driving me to want to speak to Cam Newton that way, or any athlete that I don't like, for that matter. Ray Lewis, uh, Joe Flacco, Ray Rice. G- give me some. Joe Raven- Flacco's not elite. Give me some Ravens players here, Jr. Moore. You know, I, I'd respect every last one of them. Shannon Sharp. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shannon Sharp. But you know, it's just, I'm not sure I can get on with that. You know, there, there's two rules in life. Number one is don't get sued. Number two is don't be a jerk. And, and that's the clean version of it. But, you know, somebody has to te- teach that kid that. Is that. There's nothing, there's no, there's no action worth the, these kind of views when it comes down to disrespecting somebody who can teach you a lot and has proven, whether you like it or not, he's a legend in the football community. I mean, one of the things that I immediately took away from it was uh, just somebody that is twice this person's size that like you kind of mentioned is listening to this person like if you're so rich and it doesn't matter to you so much then why are you still engaging this child 
Um, other than that, uh, I was pretty upset with the AL.com reporter that retweeted this story later that evening, Josh Moon, I will call him out, because he said that that kid was lucky that he didn't take an A whooping home. Are you kidding me? You wanted Cam Newton to put his hands on a child, right? <laughs> like that's that's ridiculous. Like I I, I think Especially this situation like, just got blown out of proportion, and Cam just should have walked away if he was so important to that kid. Well, I think if there's an opportunity to teach the kid that he's doing wrong, and there absolutely is, for for anybody that that may be misunderstanding this, I feel like at least for myself, and I feel like you're the same way, Jar. Is both people were in the wrong, but at least somebody is hopefully learning something from this at the very least. But at the end of the day, what Cam Newton was, was looking to do was to try to teach, you know, teach this kid a lesson in a way by telling the kid that he's rich a hundred times. He did, but he also was saying, you know, I do want to talk to your father and figure this sort of thing out. And it could have been much worse because Cam Newton has been known to, to be a guy that, that can fly off the handle, not necessarily in anger, but with his words, he can be, you know, quick witted and put you down pretty quickly. Uh, he's played in the NFL for ten years. He's a trash talker too. You know he can get the job done in that regard too. Uh, but I, I the just, SEC too twice. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not crazy about the whole generational thing. Like never have been. Like I may be a millennial, but I'm not like every other millennial. And and I don't know if you're a millennial or Gen Z, Jr. But you're not like every other one too either. So it's. We, just because we grew up with devices doesn't mean we're imbeciles that are disrespectful to everybody, right? And, yeah, I'm really not sure which one I am either, and I do agree with you. And uh, our boss, or at least my boss, uh, brought up the uh, commercial that came out maybe five or six years ago <laughs> of the kid while Cam was still playing for the Panthers saying that he was going to take over a starting job and make Cam's mom his favorite, uh, his favorite player, the little kid's favorite player. The old NFL Play 60 yeah, commercial. Yeah, like – um, just I don't warming see up how, the arm. Yeah, I don't see how that was like much different. I mean, other than the fact that I mean, it wasn't scripted. I mean, I I don't understand where the disconnect is for for Cam Newton here. Uh, and it's just a kid. Like, yeah, chill out, bro. You're you you're such a millionaire. Just walk away. True. Also, you know, don't disrespect the guy though. <laughs> but at the end of the day, hopefully, the kid's going to learn something. Uh, speaking of learning something, somebody needs to to tell Drew Brees that. That it's over, right? That, you know, we expected him to have already retired by now. By, like, 2017. Well, I don't know about that, but... Not not necessarily because fans and, and the public opinion say so, like, that. oh, then that's what you got to do. Like, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, if that was the case, then the Steelers wouldn't have won 11 games or whatever it was this year. Uh because then Ben Roethlisberger just wouldn't have been with the team. But the Saints got to know. The Saints got to know now. It, it has been 37 days since the playoff loss, and I'm not saying he had to turn around the next day. And I understand he had a, a very rough year with the injuries. But it was still just very apparent that his time is done. Like, nobody had to tell Peyton Manning. Like, Peyton... You know, he came into the season, didn't think it was going to go that way, and he was shot. He was done. He couldn't do it anymore. Luckily, he was able to ride that defense to a Super Bowl. That wasn't the case with Drew Brees. His time is up. What What is Drew Brees waiting on, do you think? I mean, there, there's there's no explanation, right? Another kid? <laughs> no, he's not the one that has a bunch of kids. That's Phil Rivers. That's my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Mixed up my quarterback stereotypes from 2002. <laughs> Both San Diego Chargers, by the way. Uh, Philip Rivers, of course, was the heir apparent to Drew Brees. Um, I, I don't understand this. And and that's what leads to, to Mac Jones a little bit is the Saints got to know. They've got to know whether or not it's Jameis Winston. They've got to know whether or not it's Taysom Hill or whether or not they've got to they've move up. Sean Payton's got to know. And... Honestly, the fan base has got to know too. Just just say it one way or the other. You know, let, let's let's figure this thing out. Let let's be civil about the entire situation. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back and we're gonna we're gonna discuss how this impacts with Mac Jones as well in the NFL draft. 
We'll be right back after this on Southern Fried Sports on Tide 100.9, the home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. You're listening to Southern Fried Sports with BamaOnline.com senior analyst Travis Ryer on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Welcome back into Southern Fried Sports. I'm your guest host for the afternoon, Jacob Harrison, filling in for Travis Ryer. It's not the afternoon. We're still about 30 minutes from noon, but, you know, we'll just roll with it. I've got J.R. Moore producing the show for me. We're having a blast here. We're going to dive into the NFL draft a little bit. Still a uh, about a month and a half before we get there. Fully, because I mean, we still got to get past free agency and all that sort of stuff. Today is the opening for when teams can franchise their players. Uh, no Alabama players are at risk of being franchised. I say at risk because it can be a, a death sentence to, to your second contract more often than not. But regardless, um, when it comes to this whole Drew Brees thing, having not retired, and it kind of makes you think, uh, as teams continue to or not not teams, excuse me, but as as analysts continue to push him further and further up their draft boards. Uh, I, I saw today uh, on Twitter where on Get Up, Mike Tannenbaum had Mac Jones listed as his third quarterback in the NFL draft, ahead of Justin Fields and ahead of Trey Lance. Now look, I have been very positive about Mac Jones. Very. I've been very understanding and forgiving of, of some of his setbacks as, as far as being a pro, the things that people worry about when it comes to his arm strength and his mobility, and countered with the fact that he is incredibly accurate and he is incredibly smart with the football and he knows how to manage a pocket, clean or otherwise. I, I think he, he knows how to – he has incredible pocket presence. But let's let's not get it twisted here, guys. I'm not catering to anybody. This is my my true opinion of Matt Jones. He is still, at best, the fourth quarterback in this draft, and at worst, the fifth. I can understand somebody that wants a guy that can play right now, putting him ahead of Trey Lance, because I don't think he can play right now. But he is not better than Trevor Lawrence. He's not better than Justin Fields, and he's not better than Zach Wilson. A lot of people are not going to like that, and I understand that. A lot of people want want to, to say that, that Mac Jones is better than Trevor Lawrence. He's got all of this X, Y, and Z. He played against tougher competition and yada, yada, yada. I'm not buying any of that. Does, does it calculate into who he is? Yes, fine. But you cannot, nobody can sit here and, and look me in the eye deadpan serious unbiasedly and tell me that Mac Jones is a better quarterback than than any of these guys yeah you you can do it off the mic JR but you cannot be serious about it I promise you because it's just not reality um can he have can he turn out to have a better career than those guys absolutely I I hope he does but as far as evaluating who a guy is and and understanding how to do that first of all, but second of all is is unbiasedly looking at it and and saying no, this guy is, in fact, three or four or five based off of these other attributes. You kind of have to accept that. Uh, that being said, it doesn't matter if you're the third, fourth, or fifth guy if you're going to be a top ten, top fifteen pick because you're going to make a lot of money, which you've earned. You're likely going to be able to play right away. And you're going to have that fifth year option, and those are the only things that matter when it comes to being a first round pick. Is do you go somewhere where you, where you fit in, you can play right away, 
and you can get out there and, and prove you are worthy of that fifth year option. And I think that's the biggest thing that that's going to go in Mac Jones in, in his favor. Now, as we continue to sit and look and see the situations around the NFL draft order, that's where I start to, to kind of have a little bit of a hang up is, well, where does Mac Jones go? Because you can't conceivably have him in any mock draft, have him go ahead of Trey Lance. I don't think. So if, if we're, we're just sitting here and we're projecting and we've got Jacksonville taking Trevor Lawrence and we've got the Jets taking Zach Wilson, we've got Atlanta taking Justin Fields and you get to Carolina, Carolina's got a situation where they don't have to play their quarterback right away. So what what what's the lead in? What makes you think that, that Mac Jones fits in there? Oh, because he was coached by them at the senior bowl? Come on. No. That that's not that's not at all how this works. Uh Trey Lance fits more of what that offense is looking for anyway because he, because of the mobility. So it would make more sense if Carolina decides to go in a position in, in a direction where they take a quarterback, then Carolina is what makes sense. Well, you, you stumble down a little bit. Denver uh, is th- – their options are Deshaun Watson or Drew Locke. You can say, well, Mac Jones is better than Drew Locke. Not likely. Not right now. Drew Locke at least has the experience. You get down to New York. They're not done with Daniel Jones yet. You get to San Francisco. They've got Jimmy Garoppolo, but they could be in play for some other free agents or, or make a trade for somebody. Uh, you know, they feel like a team that that could do something wild and extravagant. And then you get to, to New England at 15, and a lot of people are saying, oh, they're not going to take Mac Jones at 15. And nah, nah, nah. Well, I'll tell you what. A team like Dallas, a team like, Denver, a team like Carolina, these are all teams that can feasibly trade back as well. And if, and that's the big thing. Then you start to look at the teams that are in the latter half of the first round of this draft. Your Washingtons, your Chicagos, your Tennessees, your Pittsburghs, your New Orleans, your Tampa Bay. And you And you look at these teams and say, hmm, Maybe they can make that deal to go trade up. And I, I tell you right now, if I'm any one of those teams, and most of those teams have a situation where they'd feel good about letting somebody else play first for a year and then let Mac Jones play, but they would also, at, at least half of them would feel comfortable if Mac Jones had to play right now, that being Pittsburgh, New Orleans, and Washington. The other two uh, being Tampa Bay, in Chicago, you'd you'd much prefer to not have to throw Mac Jones out there one for Chicago, uh, because they don't have any pieces. And if you're Tampa, it's it's because Tom Brady's not out there for some reason and, and that's no bueno the whole season is is shot. <laughs> but it's very difficult to to kind of get a gauge of where Mac Jones fits the best because the NFL is moving away from what he does as a quarterback. But nonetheless, when you've got a guy that has these sorts of tools, you can build him into something. I, I I get the impression that a lot of the people that don't like Mac Jones don't like him right now, right out of the gate. And they think that simply because of what he is right now makes it too difficult to pull the trigger on that. And that's fair. That's all well and good. Everybody's going to be entitled to, to their opinion. But at the end of the day, this is a guy that can be very successful in the NFL if given the opportunity to succeed. Because when I look at what has happened with Tua Tungvaloa, out of the quarterbacks that were drafted in the first round last year, Jordan Love didn't play. But Joe Burrow goes out there, and he's got wide receiver weapons, and he looks good. Doesn't look great because the offensive line is so terrible, and he ends up getting injured. Justin Herbert looks incredible, but you have to consider the wide receiving options he has there. Offensive line is okay. 
running back core was a little decimated. So the injuries, or excuse me, not the injuries, but the, the wins just didn't come for Justin Herbert. And that was kind of a painful thing to see. But with Tua, Tua was out there with awful, awful weapons and awful, awful running back, awful, awful, awful offensive line play. And yet here he is out here winning games. And I think that that shows the mark of how Tua is a great quarterback and how he can get things done. But it's also a, a testament of why people don't like Tua is because everything around him has failed and he doesn't look great while he's doing it. And that's that's what Mac Jones is going to need. Now, this isn't a, you know, oh, he won't be successful without anything around him. I don't know if y'all know this, but the Houston Texans had the third worst record in the NFL and they had Deshaun Watson. And you know why they only won four games last year despite Deshaun Watson being healthy most of the season? Uh, because he didn't have anything around them. Because every quarterback needs something around them. When you need, when you need to start worrying is when Matt Ryan has all the weapons he has around him and his team is four and 12. Or when Matthew Stafford has all these weapons around him and his team is five and 11. That's when you need to start worrying. Uh, not when a guy is in his first year and all of his weapons are gone. Uh, the name of the game is always to surround your quarterbacks with talent. That's why as soon as Jacksonville selects Trevor Lawrence, the first thing out of all of these analysts' mouth is, okay, now let's go put some talent around him. Let's go get him some offensive line help. Let's go get him some help at running back. Uh, let's go get him some help at, at wide receiver. He's only got LaVisca Chenault or whatever. You always want to do that. So the whole argument of, oh, these guys can't succeed without talent around them. You're damn right. Nobody can. Very few can. Uh, there's this guy named Tom Brady. He's done it a few times. And outside of him, it's been very, very far and few between uh, to, to really pull that talent out. Do you have to make average players good and good players great? Yes, that takes time. Not even Trevor Lawrence, I don't think, is going to be able to do that. Joe Burrow didn't do it last year. Joe Burrow was able to play within the scheme of what the Bengals had, and it ultimately was its downfall because they didn't build a team around him before they threw him out there. You got no other choice since today's NFL, but it is what it is. We have to adjust the way we look at these quarterbacks. Let's jump out to the Peterbrook Chocolatier Hotline and check in with Tom. Tom, what's going on, brother? Jacob, what's up? Not much. Uh, that was an interesting tweet. I'll have to jump get to that one here in a second. But uh, yeah, man, what's on your mind? Well, I was going to bring something up that I read. Uh last night in the New York Post about uh, Deshaun Watson. You know, it's been kind of quiet for the last few days. But uh, the article I read are saying that the Carolina Panthers have made moves kind of quietly here in the last uh, little bit. They cut four players. And the guy that wrote this article said, I think they're trying to get in position to if something develops with Watson, that they want to make a strong play for him. What's your take? I think that makes a lot of sense because, uh, you know, first of all, you know, he played at Clemson that, that sends him back out there to the Carolinas and that's a good idea. But, uh, you know, the Panthers would be a team that I would expect should they be able to get their hands on Deshaun Watson would, would be a very exciting team to watch in the NFL. Um, I, I'm I'm just kind of excited to see where he go, where he's going to go. I don't Me too. I I I don't like this whole thing where Houston is kind of holding him hostage. I I don't think it's it's good for anybody. Uh, but in the NFL, don't you think a lot of stuff goes on that we don't hear about? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, until it's in play, and I think that may be what's going on. Well, what's even going on here, even and, what we do it, here is isn't always. The full truth. Uh, take the Devontae wow. Smith choosing Mac Jones over uh, to a tongue of Aloha thing. Like, that was immediately blown up into this whole Mac Jones versus Tua thing. Oh, Smitty doesn't want to go back and play with Tua, even though not a month earlier, Smith, you know, Smith was saying how he'd love to go back and play with Tua. So, all these smoke screens and everything. The NFL is, is a gamesmanship league where uh, teams have to maneuver around the other teams in the league. That's why I think Carolina uh, is serious 
because they did it without a lot of fanfare and, and hardly any. You know, you would have to really be looking at the uh, at the trade wires <laughs> to find these deals they made with those four players. But uh, I thought I'd pass that along. I thought, I, I thought it was really interesting to think about Watson with Carolina. And uh, and though Matt, is it Matt Rue? And what's the offensive coordinator? Uh, Joe Brady. Joe Brady, yeah. Uh, yeah, he would be – that would be something to behold, I think. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> if, if you thought Joe Burrow was great in that offense, I mean – Check out Deshaun Watson. Uh, Joe's great Whoa. and all, but Deshaun Watson's got all got the ears behind him. Uh, he's probably one of the greatest college players to ever play without winning the Heisman. Tom, I'm curious, where do you want to see Matt Jones play in the NFL? I want him to go to New England. You like those old Tom Brady comparisons? Well, no, I, it's not that. It's the system that I think that uh, that is in place in uh, New England. I think he would flourish, flourish in a... Uh, system uh uh like belichick run well that'd be interesting because belichick is one of those guys that that thinks he can get it done with with the league's misfits uh and that kind of bit him in the butt this year uh the team does not well, have a I lot mean, of offensive talent they did go seven out. and nine though opt out is what got him oh yeah on defense yeah they, they didn't want a lot more games but still the offense just it it wasn't just cam newton out there uh that that looked bad I, their, their entire offense did not look great. Uh, you know, Damian but Harris flashed a few I, times, I but their wide receivers were terrible. If, if things get back to normal, I think Matt would do well in that system. I think so, too. We got another uh, call to, to, to get out to, Tom. We appreciate it, bud. All right, man. All right, let's jump to Bud here on the Peterbrook Chocolatier hotline. Bud, what's going on, buddy? I was wondering... Uh, is there a problem with Drew Brees? Is he not performing well? Uh, no. He he had a, a pretty awful season uh, by his standards. Uh, now that that well, being what about by NFL standards, he he quarterbacked the team to what the his conference playoffs. Yes. Well, uh, not the conference. He 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 went to the the, the divisional round. Uh, they they were one and done. Uh, but that doesn't it just because you get to the playoffs. My my Steelers. Okay, but I, I haven't heard any Saints fans complaining about this. I've heard plenty that are ready for for Drew Brees to be gone and and to to move on. Well, but, uh, just because you go to the playoffs doesn't mean millennial. that you have done anything relative to being successful. My Pittsburgh Steelers are in a position where they don't know what they're going to do with their quarterback because Ben Roethlisberger played terribly in the playoffs. He played terribly throughout the the stretch to get into the playoffs and that is similar to what Drew Brees did as well. You're saying Drew Brees had a bad year? He had a terrible year. This th- this is a, a wide consensus. Yes. Most people feel hmm. this way. The injuries did play a part. I will fully admit that. And early on in the season, uh y- you can go back and and run the tape, pull the receipts. I was not fully convinced that his arm was shot. I was on Drew Brees' side and felt like maybe people were overreacting to him having lost just a, a smidgen of a step. But as the season progressed, he did continue to regress. And then as the injuries piled up, he didn't get any better. And then as the, stre- the final stretch went on, the team continued to play badly under him. He was not able to get the ball downfield. He made very, very poor decisions uh, late in the season. I just didn't realize that when I was watching the Saints win all those games when he quarterback. I didn't realize he was doing that poorly. I guess it's on me. If if you, you know, feel some that people way, just I mean. want the other shoe to drop. I realize he's going to retire, but some people just aren't happy unless that shoe's hit the floor. And sometimes the shoe doesn't need to hit the floor right then. Maybe it needs to happen the next season or the season after that. But well, at what point is I'm, is Drew? I'm not convinced that Drew Brees is washed up yet. He's on his way. You and I are on our way to dying one day. I mean, you know that's that's life. Drew Brees' athletic career will end, and I'm. But I just I haven't heard. I'm part of the state where everybody's Saints fans. They're not Falcons fans. They're not Tennessee fans. They're Saints fans, and I haven't heard anybody criticizing down here. 
that's fair, and everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I don't mean to like shut down what, what you're saying. If you think Drew Brees can still get it done – and he can be the leader for your team. More power to you, man. I, well, I like I said, I don't, I don't my know, fan base of my own team is completely club, split. Sean it's Payton just... cut Sean Payton cut nuts, brother. And if he's not getting it done, he won't be played. It's just interesting, but this is this is my main point. Whether Drew Brees continues to play or not is is truly of no concern to me. Not be because I'm not a fan of that team. Uh, but at the very least as i was talking about with the whole cam newton situation i respect the hell out of drew Brees. nobody else has thrown for eighty thousand yards in the nfl nobody has come close to his records except for tom brady and even still there's a chance that tom brady could retire without breaking some of these records by drew Brees. there is absolutely no reason that i'm not being disrespectful to this guy whatsoever and i'm not encouraging his retirement I, I i have no place to do that what i am saying is and what I said throughout that segment was the Saints need to know what Drew Brees is doing. The Saints need to know if they he's know coming now. back. And they know now. If if they know, then you read the, the papers, didn't you? You read the internet. They know now. And if they don't want him back, they can just. Well, nothing him has been officially publicly said, is what I'm saying. Hmm. And the fans deserve to know just as well because the fans were led to believe. In, in a way, with some of the shots that we saw, where you know the converse, they were led the, the, to believe he was going to retire, and he exactly and said, "Well, I'm not. I'm coming back for another year." Well, he hasn't said wah, that. When, when, I'm sorry, your expectations are crushed. If, if, if the coach Sean Payton thinks he's good enough to play, uh, he'll play. Yeah, no doubt. More power to him. I agree and with you. <laughs> one other thing, I hate Cam. I could go on for. 45 minutes about everything that's wrong with that guy. But that kid who was heckling him, he needs his old butt kick. Could not agree more. All right, bud. I got to run to break, man. Good deal. All right. Woo. Let's go to break, JR. This is Southern Fried Sports on Tide 100.9, the home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. A beautiful day today with sunshine and full supply. The high 68. For tonight, clear with the low at 42. Tomorrow, very mild. Partly to mostly sunny. The high 71. Thursday, a mix of sun and clouds. The chance of a few isolated showers. The high 69. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. The flagship station for Alabama Crimson Tide football. Alabama touchdown. Only on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Welcome back into Southern Fried Sports. We got to wrap things up. Uh, shut down, man. I wish you would have called in with this question, man, uh, because my opinion doesn't value more than anybody. Uh, June Jones, uh, of course, uh, last week or the week before said that uh, Mac Jones is the top quarterback in the NFL draft. What makes my opinion better than his? And uh, shut down, man, my opinion is not better than anybody else's. It is simply my own. And if I disagree with somebody's opinion, I can shut it down just as well. Uh, here's the thing, though, is that on April 27th or 28th, whatever day the NFL draft is, Trevor Lawrence is going to be the first overall pick, and therefore that opinion becomes null and void no matter what you think. And as I said, Mac Jones could very well go out and have a better NFL career than Trevor Lawrence. I would not be shocked by the fact. I, I, I would jump for joy because I have been the biggest Mac Jones supporter out of anybody at this whole freaking station. I am not I, here I shutting disagree. down. Joe Will, Joe, Will, Joe Will would like a word. I, well, me and Joe Will can have words because I have been more supportive over Mac Jones than anybody. And the day after Tony Sakalas came on the game and said that he thinks Mac Jones could be one and done, I got on that bandwagon with him. And I have been there since day one saying the guy could get it done and that he could be an NFL quarterback. And after the Missouri game, when I saw him make NFL throws, I said that guy is going to be a first-round pick in the NFL. He wasn't even top five in most people's rankings. I support Mac Jones, but he is not the first, second, third, or fourth-best quarterback in this draft 
because of the qualities that some of these other guys have that are more supportive of today's NFL, I I, just, I can't. Like I can't. I we have we, when we speak words, we have to listen to them because I have been nothing but supportive of Mac Jones. Nothing but supportive. But there's a way this NFL draft works. And just because you think somebody is the best does not mean that they will go any earlier. Because I guarantee you, if June Jones himself puts out a mock draft, he ain't putting Mac Jones first overall to, to the Jacksonville Jaguars because everybody's going to laugh at it. Nobody's going to click on it. Because it's not realistic. It's not what's going to happen. He's not going to put him at two. He's not going to put him at four. He might put him at eight. And therefore, what I said carries value. That's all I'm saying. I have respected everybody's opinion. I'm just I'm just asking that when I say something, we understand the context behind what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. R.I.P. Daft Punk. We've had fun. The, the show kind of escalated right right at the, the end of the show. So uh, I think we did a good job. Travis would be proud. He'll be back tomorrow for Southern Fried Sports. Thanks to JR. Check me on Off the Edge 7 to 9 on Friday. That's when we'll be back. I appreciate it. Take it easy. Have a great Tuesday. Your gift keeps on giving. What is this some feeling? If you want to leave, I'm with it.